With the Obi-Wan Kenobi series really causing a lot of criticism between the Star Wars fans and a lot of creators coming forward about their feelings about the actual Star Wars show, such as Favreau and even of course others like Joby Harold and Deborah Chow really expressing exactly what they did with the series and you know, when we talked about how Favreau felt about the Kenobi series and how he also had a lot of criticism against the show, it just goes to show you that Joby and Deborah really did not really have a full vision of the series. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one of the big plans by Disney executives right now has a lot to do with finding alternatives and or strategies to really enhancing the Star Wars experience. And a lot of that is going to be accomplished through reviving Star Wars Legends, bringing in a lot of unused material from the 1990s and the 2000s and exactly how that's going to be dragging its way into the current canon. And that's exactly what Favreau and Filoni have been focusing on for the past nine months, give or take. So with that being said, when it all dwindles down to the Kenobi TV series, we've been talking about this for a very long time and exactly what is going on with season two for the series and how it's really going to be considered a soft reboot. And we went over what a soft reboot essentially means. It is going to continue after season one, but this soft reboot is not going to acknowledge the events of the first season, if that makes sense. So with that being said, what's even all the more exciting is exactly what's happening behind the scenes right now with the soft reboot of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, with the Kenobi series creating a lot of fan criticism within the Star Wars community, Disney executives have been forming multiple plans on how to properly move ahead with the continuation of Obi-Wan's journey in the Star Wars universe. With a Kenobi Season 2 now greenlit and moving ahead in development, it will be treated as a soft reboot with a brand new title for the series, borrowing unused storyboards from the Kenobi trilogy that was cancelled by Kathleen Kennedy. Now, one of the storyboards that are set to be used in the second season of Obi-Wan involves an in-depth series of illustrations that will, be, that will actually focus on a new apprentice of Darth Vader that will revive a big Legends piece in the Star Wars franchise. Now, the storyboard involves a scene that actually takes place on Coruscant, as well as, of course, where a mysterious figure is bowing before Darth Vader eventually on the world of Mustafar, inside of his castle, on, of course, Mustafar, where this is said to take place in Vader's Sith Observatory, where he's actually sitting on his throne. The character is said to be wearing Sith Stalker armor, with a lightsaber hilt attached to his waist. Now, the character is said to be no other than Disney's version of Starkiller that will be making his entrance into the soft reboot of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Let me pause right here quickly for a second before I get to the more involved material, is that they are going to have scenes on Coruscant that tease the Starkiller character that eventually makes his way over to Mustafar, bowing before Darth Vader. Now, of course, as of right now, it's dubbed as being Darth Vader's apprentice, I'm thinking that it's going to be more around the lines of them making Starkiller into a dark side user, kind of like how Kylo Ren is not a Sith and just a dark side user. It's almost coming across like that, but who knows exactly what path Disney's going to take with the characters. So far, they only have Starkiller encased in the Sith Stalker armor. All right, so his face is not seen. You don't see Galen Merrick's, you know, face in the illustrations described of what they're actually taking from the Kenobi trilogy. So let's be clear about this. These are storyboards that were already made for the Kenobi movie trilogy that Stuart Beatty was making that are now being revived and essentially reestablished to be used in this soft reboot of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Which, by the way, it's going to get a new title, it's going to have a different format, and it's just going to feel like a brand new season, in a sense. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of what they did with, you know, the Suicide Squad and Suicide Squad. It almost comes across like that in a very odd way. 
where it's kind of I've kind of like considered a soft reboot. So when you look at this scenario, all right, everything with the Kenobi series is that this is a big deal because Star Killer is one of the most favored villains in Star Wars Legends and also a hero because there's so many different angles to the character. Now, we talked about this before in the past that there were initial plans by J.J. Abrams to create a piece of canon that Starkiller Base was actually named after this popular Sith character that was once Darth Vader's apprentice that actually came up with the plans of Starkiller Base. That was the initial idea by J.J. that never came out to be, and so he just flat out called it Starkiller with no explanation in the movie. So, with that being said too, however, this is where things begin to progress even further as well. Alright, so, on top of that, this storyboard then goes on to showcase a moment in which Vader gives another saber to the Starkiller character, where he clips it on the other side of his waist and begins to exit Vader's castle, followed by entering into his new ship that resembles a TIE interceptor that is embedded in shiny silver-like armor. Now, Disney is described to be changing some very minor details about Starkiller in the Kenobi series, and is on the hunt for Jedi across the galaxy, and will also be on the hunt for Kenobi in the new reboot of the series that will still serve as a continuation. Now, further, it's said that the illustration shows Starkiller's costume actually dubbed as Marek Mark III, most likely in reference to Galen Marek. Now, the thing that really does make me wonder about this is when we go ahead and look at Endor Episode 4, there is a moment in there where we get to actually go into the shop. And in the background behind Mon Mothma, you do see that Sith Stalker armor. Could that very well be Starkiller's armor, or is that just some random Sith Stalker armor? That's the biggest question of all, right? It almost comes like they're teasing the ultimate demise of Starkiller at one point in his life, and the armor was actually salvaged, essentially. So, this is a very interesting development, the fact that Starkiller was meant to be an aspect in the Kenobi trilogy, and how they are gonna be borrowing those storyboards to use in the Kenobi series soft reboot. Now, one thing that Ewan McGregor teased a couple of weeks ago was that he signed on for a multi-show contract deal, and which, by the way, he has behind the scenes. It is an actual thing. Uh, so did Hayden Christensen. It's why he's back for Star Wars Ahsoka. It's also why he's back for an animated series and another mystery show. So there's a lot of things happening with both Ewan and Hayden for the future of this franchise and exactly where it's heading. Now, Starkiller, I think is a great addition. I think it would actually gain a lot of fan interest if Disney does this right. Given that Favreau and Filoni will be involved in the Kenobi reboot, I have a lot of faith in it. When is it gonna come out? That really is open on the table for discussion over at Lucasfilm. They're trying to get this thing out by the end of 24, or maybe the beginning of 25, because they're not even close to being, of course, in the filming stage. They're still working on the general outline of the show and the plot. So overall, you know, let me know what you guys have to say about all of this below, you know, in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.